just uh, go ahead and solve this single order differential equation. So, well, this is the question we started with. Okay. So, it's going to rearrange everything so that we have everything on one. We have all, let me just solve the order different sides. So, we have y prime equals minus 4xy. Okay. And then I'm going to rewrite this as dy by dx equals minus 4xy okay recall that these two are exactly the same okay so y prime is the same as um, dy by dx they just do con notational conventions okay so if I multiply both sides by dx I get dy equals minus 4xy dx okay then, then I'm going to divide, it, divide both sides by I multiply both sides by 1 over y so I get 1 over y dy equals minus 4x dx Okay, so that looks, looks pretty good now. So we can take the logarithm of, sorry, not the logarithm, the, the um, integral of both sides. So take the integral of both sides. And this is pretty trivial, right? So this is just, what's the integral or the antiderivative of one over uh, one over y? That's just the natural log of absolute value of, of y which equals take minus well it's gonna take the four outs well I'm gonna write this up here actually so this is the same as writing minus four times the integral of x dx right so you know that's the rule of the integral if you have a constant you can just pull the constant out of the integral do the integral itself and then just multiply it out back in. Okay, so now we have what's the so it's just minus four times the antiderivative of x, which is x squared over two. Okay, and then finally we have ln of y equals minus two x squared okay so now is the interesting part right now we have to solve for y so what we can do is we can take the exponent of both sides and that would just give us the natural law uh, sorry the absolute value of y equals so you know if you take if you just uh, as, as an aside if you take the exponent of an of a, of a logarithm that's sort of like taking that's it, it's uh, it's the inverse essentially. So you get whatever's inside this. Okay, so I'll, I'll just put it up here. So if you take e, so if you take e to the ln of x, you get x. Okay, so it's just like the, the inverse of this function. Similarly, you get ln y here. So you get the absolute value of y here. And we take and we have e to the power of minus two x squared okay so we still need to solve for y so how can we do that um oh sorry because this is going to be plus c okay plus c don't forget these are all this is, there should be a plus c here and a plus c here but we can turn combine them all to one side and just call it plus c because plus however many constants it's just one arbitrary constant right this is just an arbitrary constant all right so this is just plus c up here now to get the y what we can what we can recognize is we can rewrite this further as the absolute value of y is e to the minus 2x squared times e to the c because it's so i'm just gonna put these asides up here so it's a law of exp exponent exponents that if you have two exponents, so let's say it's some value a to the power of b, 
and multiplied by another value, a to the power of c, this is the same as a to the power of b plus c, right? Okay, so this what that that that's the that, that's what we're using here to separate these two out. Okay, and what we can recognize is that e to the power of some constant is still just some constant, right? Okay, but we have to somehow incorporate, we have to somehow deal with this absolute value function. Well, what the absolute value function is saying is that this can be positive or negative. Okay, so if we call this e to the c, e to the c component, a new new name, let's call it d. So we write we, we write this as y equals d times e to the minus 2x squared. Now let's make it easier to read. Bring it over here. So we can write out this as y equals e to the power of, sorry, y equals d times e to the power of minus 2x squared. So what we've done here essentially is just incorporated the fact that this can be both positive and negative into this constant, right? Because it's, a, it's an arbitrary constant, it can be positive or negative. So we've basically incorporated this absolute value into this function by uh, incorporating it into this, into this one constant value, okay? So that's the answer to that problem.